morning with my mother and my dad. They taught me the word of God and all about salvation plan. And one day they went to sleep to awake in glory land. But we now go to sleep and wake up in glory land. I'll enter into heaven carried by an angel band. Again, I'll see my mom and dad and shake my best and sing his hand. When I go to sleep on
to teach and he called some to sing to spread the word and so the gospel sing he called some to preach and to let his praises ring now i hear jesus calling me he's calling me Bye. 
People and you make a lot of friends. I've helped revival from town to town, and I guess that I've preached in all kind of churches around. And I'm for a pastor 100%. But speaking for myself, there's nothing that can take the place of an old gospel tent. I've had criticism to a certain extent since I've been hauling around and setting up tents. But if you can spare a few moments to hear what I have to say, I'd like to tell you how I come about getting in this way. It was 20 years ago when I first went hobbling along with Mom to an old gospel tent. Well, you see, I was a hopeless cripple along about then, and we'd lost all hopes that I'd ever walk again. One day a friend came by that we all knew and told about a big gospel tent that she had gone to. She told about the man that was preaching there, believed in divine healing by faith and prayer. She went on to say that on the night that she went, people testified that God had healed them right there under the tent. Well, Mom talked about the revival for a day or so, and on the following Sunday, she decided that we'd go. I didn't know God when we left home. For all I knew, he was just another doctor with a white coat on. For there were no Christians in my generation, and I didn't know anything about salvation. The tent was nearly full when we got there, and there wasn't too many empty chairs. We saw children sitting down, up front in shavings that was scattered round. Well, Mom left me there, and then she went to find her a seat in the back of the tent. The service started and they began to sing and pray. Then a man stood in front of us and said, God can heal you today. Now I was only a seven year old boy and I didn't know what those words meant. But when he called his healing line, I saw people going up from all over the tent. And I guess that someone noticed that I was a little crippled boy. And I guess that they'd taken it for granted that I'd come to be prayed for. And when they came over to where I was, I didn't know what they had on their mind. But they helped me to my feet and put me right up in front of the line. And when that preacher laid his hand on my head and began to talk to the Lord, 
I felt something go through me like I had never felt before. Though I knew the doctor stated that the bones in my leg were as soft as chalk. But while that preacher was praying for me, I heard a strange voice saying, You can walk. I was a hopeless cripple when I went to the tent that day. But thank God, I was a living miracle that evening when I went away. And it wasn't long after that till God saw fit to save my soul. And he gave me a tent and told me to preach his word when I was only nine years old. I know that there are some folks that will run people down for going across the country hauling gospel tents around. But I'll always be thankful that one day I went hobbling along with Mom to an old gospel tent. God reborn America
the hymn book down and sing some old fashioned songs. Then kneel down and have an old fashioned talk with the Lord. Just get down on your knees and confess all your troubles and pour out your heart to him there and he will roll back the dark clouds and pour you a blessing and you'll find that the savior still cares open up the petty bible that's been laid away so long and read the blessed word once more
Easter Brothers and the Green Valley Quartet. And we've come to the close of another recording session today. And we've worked hard and long hours today to do our best to bless your heart and encourage you to go on in the battle for the Lord, for your precious soul that will be saved in the end, to try to encourage you to press on and not look back behind you. I remember Lot's wife who looked back, and I've always wondered what caused her to look back toward the city, but I'm inclined to believe it was love. I'm just hoping that if I look back, I'll see some of them coming with me. And it's a sure thing that you can be destroyed by, by the draw of your heart, pulling you back towards your loved ones. This morning before we left the room, in our home where we left from, we asked the Lord to bless us. And we believe he has blessed us today. And oh, let me admonish you now, in these troublesome times, be steadfast and unmovable for just a little while longer. The Lord will come and will not tarry. He knows you need and he's going to help you, whatever your trouble may be. So God bless your heart and please don't look back, but look ahead. Praise his wonderful name. Don't look back, there's a bride.